wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want to extend our condolences to the family member, to Mary particularly, and all of those who mourn the loss of Peter Prentice. As we get started to commence the service, we want to share together, and I invite you to stand with me, and join me as we read the shepherd's psalm, say it together, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk to the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When you remain standing as we're going to ask Dwight to come at this time, Dwight Prentice to lead us in the opening prayer. Blessed and good morning. Welcome all. Heavenly Father and God, we give you thanks and praise for this morning, Almighty God. Lord Father, this ceremony that is about to take place and the celebration, Almighty God, of life. Heavenly Father, as we go through the day's procedures, we ask for your guidance, your mercy, your protection, your covering over all of us, Almighty God. Lord Father, protect each and every one of us that are here who is on their way and is coming, Almighty God, bring them safely, guide us and protect us through the service. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen and amen. Thank you, Dwight. You may have your seats as we're going to invite Yvette Budram to come now to words of welcome. Good morning, all. Um, I um, Peter is one of Peter's stepdaughter. We just, on behalf of everyone, thank you for coming to celebrate the life of our father, uncle, brother, cousin, friend. I'm going to have to keep this short and sweet. Peter was loved by many. There's nothing new. We are here to celebrate his life. And after all, we are all family. We made a little bit of changes in the program to accommodate, try to accommodate everyone. Um, so if it's not in order, forgive us. We had, that was a, some last minute changes. Um, eventually we're going to do an open floor where everyone would be able to come up and share their stories. If we can keep it to a minimum or maximum of one minute per person, that would help so that we can get everyone to say something about him. That would be all for me from now. So Eva said we're going to be celebrating. And one of the things that we do is celebrate in song. We have Richard who's been helping us in the keyboard, and we have someone who can sing a little better than I can, will help us lead in the, the song. But you won't just sing, you can clap. Yeah, you can, you know, holler and hoop if you want to. But let's enjoy this time together, even as we mourn and we sorrow, but we celebrate his life. Thank you, God, for the opportunity we had over the years to spend with him. So we'll stand again with us as we sing. When the rule is called up yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning break eternal bright and fair. When the saber so shall gather on the horn beyond the shore, and the Oh, <laughs> 
when the road is called up here under when the Yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there on that bright, on that bright and cloudy morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen one shall gather to the home beyond the sky, and the roll is called up yonder, I be there. Oh, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor, let us labor for the master from the dawn in said his son. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. When all life is over, on our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Amen. Amen. Awesome. You did well. You may have your seats. Amen. Marsha is going to come now to share a tribute. Morning, everyone. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Ironically, that is from 1 Peter chapter 3.15. It was one of the very first scriptures my father ever made me memorize. And I used to tease him for the fact that it was from the book of Peter. My father, he was my hero, my teacher. And though we would say that once you're a believer of God, you're not supposed to idolize anybody, but he was my idol. I always knew once he was around, I was that little girl that was safe, protected. He taught me a lot growing up. Some good, some not good. Now don't get me wrong, the not good is not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. The not so good was how to deal with certain things in life. He taught me how to cuss without cussing. One thing he always taught me as well is to read people, read their eyes. And his eyes was very expressive. He's the only person I think, other than my old primary school teacher, that daddy would buff you with his eyes. He didn't have to say anything. When that menacing stare hit you, sometimes you don't even know what you're doing. 
you just stop in your tracks. That is how he was, a disciplinarian, yes. He was a disciplinarian. He had certain rules that he lived by and he taught us that, my brother and I, in which we, of course, we taught our children the same thing. And he loved to laugh. He loved to tell jokes. He loved to tell a story. And when my father started to tell you a story, it's the different expressions and sound effects too, eh? You get any sound effects? Hollywood? They want nothing with him. Nothing. Some special moments I remember with my father, somehow a lot of it involved TV. My love of westerns, kung fu, as kick up as we would know it. That is bonding time for my father and I. First movie I ever watched, I remember, was Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. <laughs> Halfway through, I was, what, seven years? You know, for a seven year old to sit down that long to look at that movie? It wasn't easy. And after, even many times after, every time, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly showing, we would sit and watch it. That was our time. And I will usually get the whole story of the actors. And that is how I knew some of those old actors, Lee Van Cleef, Charles Brosnan, <laughs> Eli Wallach, Sam Elliott, names that my children, they don't know. <laughs> and he Kung Fu, oh gosh, he love a silver fox. He love a silver fox. But, in movies to laugh, nothing used to tickle him more than a Jerry Lewis. I don't think it have a Jerry Lewis movie that we did not see. He loved his Jerry Lewis. He used to imitate him too. My love of sports, the passion I have for sports I got from my father, including the arguing and quarreling, to the point that my brother and all used to say, Marsha, your pressure will go up. They get in pay, you not get in pay. You see cricket, football, and don't talk about Olympics time. Track and field and gymnastics, that was our thing. That was our thing. But like with most things in life, we tend to take things for granted. And I will say I did. I took a lot for granted. Because you know in the back of your mind, daddy dear man, so, where I should have been conversing with him more. We used to talk a lot, you know, but not as often as we should have. Sometimes, honestly, a month, two months might pass, and then I would call him or he'll call me. But I always know Daddy there. If anything, I could call Daddy, Daddy there. Well, he's here in spirit now. And he will always live in my memory. Those memories I will cherish until my last breath. And all these stories, what I've never told my children, I'll remember to tell them now. Because at times like these, we're always reminded of how precious life is. How to cherish it. My father, the stately man that he was, I knew I was loved. I knew I was cherished, and I knew I was always protected. And I believe his spirit will still somehow watch over me, to the point that if it is I know I'm going to make a mistake, a positive, I will hear his voice. Masha, what are you going to do? That's all he used to say. You ever know a man, a few words, but yet still, he used to say a lot. That was Peter Sylvester Prentice. And I am happy to know that he touched so many lives. I've heard a lot of stories within the last few days. Well, all this is to hear stories, but 
to hear from other people a lot of stories on how he impacted them. I want to say thank you to all of you for sharing those. Because those are memories as well that I will cherish. And oh, he will be missed. He will be missed. Yes, it's okay to applaud. We want to thank you for that. Sharing those memories of your father with us, appreciate it very much. At this time, we're going to have the scripture being read to us by Damian from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. We'll again ask you to stand while this is being done and remain standing as we have that second song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, to be followed by a special by Sarah. And then we're going to be having a song by Richard, Richard Peer, You Raised Me Up. In that order. Hi, morning, everyone. Okay. Um, scripture is Second Corinthians, chapter one, verse three to seven, King James, King James Version. It says, "Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and God of all comfort." who comforteth us in, the, in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them when we are in trouble. And, and by comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope to you is steadfast, knowing that all we are all partakers in the sufferings, so shall ye be also be cons cons consolidated. I just want to say, um, Auntie Mary, um, we are here with you, we are here for you, and we will stand with you during this time. Know that we are with you, and you're not alone. Amen. Right? In the song sheet, we have what a friend we have in Jesus, and we can sing lustily as we celebrate my god brother Peter Prentice. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptation? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take 
take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, we and heavy laden, come with the Lord of care, precious Saviour, still a refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friend this my forsake. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a solid stay. be seated. The song that I'm going to sing for strength, for comfort, for the family, I pray that it will bless your hearts and you will be comforted in some way. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I and face tomorrow because he live all fear is gone because I His son, they call him Jesus. He came to love, he land forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon and an empty grave is dear to prove my Savior
and Jen one day. He will cross the river and fight life's trial. No war with pain. But when, when death gives way to victory, I'll see the light of glory and I know he <laughs> and as I said, a man of few words, that he would never pass without saying good morning and we'd have a little exchange. And so, in celebration of his life, in terms of his contribution to life and his connection with everyone, I sing. Amen. <laughs>
sometimes I think I see eternity. Thank you, Richard and Sarah, for those beautiful songs. At this time, we're going to have a short time of open mic, open floor. But you heard that we're going to be just actually to keep it to one minute. Which is kind of limited. So we're going to extend it a bit. One minute minimum, three minutes maximum. How that works, all right? All right, we're going to work within that window. OK, so you can come now and pay your tributes to our late brother, Peter Prentice. Now, I know we have some soldiers in the house, so I don't think they, they are people who are bashful and shy. I'd like to say good morning to everybody. I greet you all today in the name of the Most High God and my Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't have as much stories as my sister. But the thing about it is, my cousin would have told me this week, he said, Mark, your father's always a giant amongst men. He always stood out. Matthew 7 tells us that, ask and you shall receive, knock and the door shall be opened. Today I ask that each and every one of us be comforted today. And I know it will be received, comforted by the fact that he could have touched many lives. Many lives. And the thing about it, he did it selflessly. There's an inside joke home growing up. He would never come home early on a Friday. <laughs> never. The first Friday my father came home early was the 27th of July, 1990. <laughs> that was the first Friday I know in my life he came home early. And he'd have gotten a phone call. He walk inside, pick up the phone. He say, yeah, that's not right, true. His dirty clothes he now take out, he put it on. He said, Judith, all they are gone. <laughs> that is how he was. I remember there was a story at a time that two police officers running down a guy in Mokrapo. And one of the police officers lost his gun. I heard that two soldiers assisted them and even captured the guy. Years later, I found out who one of the soldiers was. <laughs> there was a story that a child was in a drain, got picked up in floodwaters, and two soldiers assisted them. Well, I understood why he came home dirty and wet that day. But the thing about it was he never would look for any recognition. 
I would have met many people who he would have interacted with and he would have helped soldiers, non-soldiers, families, neighbors, strangers. And the thing about the apprentice family, we can't hide. They can't hide. So I would just ask that we, you say we celebrated his life, but his life was celebrated. His whole life was celebrated. This is just another stage that we have to accept. And I pray that we all be comforted in the fact that we know he's in a better place. We are sure of that. And we still have the memories and the love that we can hold on to. So to everybody, his brothers, his sisters, his family, everybody who he would have interacted with, remember him. Remember the individual, remember the person, remember what he would have stood for. We have a lot of things that he taught me without even saying a word. He lived it, so I saw how to be. And I'm appreciative of that. I am thankful of that. So I hope that everybody remembers him. I hope that they appreciated him. And the guy there was correct. He's not a man of many words. But his presence was always felt. He would have touched many allies, and I appreciate that. I'm thankful for that. To each and every person who is feeling sad now, be comforted. Because he was not an emotional person. I can't say I've ever seen him cry. I can't say I've ever seen him done it. But you know he was there loving. You felt the love coming out from him. When he cared about you, you know he cared about you. And the funny thing, he would care about strangers. He treated people how he wanted to be treated. And I believe that within life, that would have carried him a very long way. So to each and every person, remember him. Be comforted that he, he lived how he wanted to. And I attribute that to the fact that his early beginnings began in church. Yeah. If there's one thing, he knew God. He may not have always listened to what he has told by God, but he knew God. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing about Peter Sylvester Prentice, he does what he wants. <laughs> Don't matter what. He had pride. Too much pride sometimes, yes. But as I said, he was a giant amongst men. He was. And he still is, actually, because his legacy lives on in many ways. It lives on in children. It lives on in, in, in memories people have. It lives on in a way that he has taught so many lives. I don't think. Anybody here could say that he didn't touch them in one way or the other. So let us continue remembering Peter, or Bird as you used to call him, I was told. <laughs> you know, but I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for the interactions we'd have had. I'm thankful for the family that I've been brought into. I'm thankful for the people I'd have met along the way through him. Because the thing about him, he didn't need an introduction. Everybody knew him. And they knew what he was and what he stood for. So I'll leave you that, but remember, remember him. All right, thank you. Good morning. I am Benedict Lopez by way of introduction, an ex-serviceman, just like quite a few of the people here this morning. And um, while sitting there, I would have heard a number of things about Peter Prentice. You could call him that now because he's deceased. But what I never heard and what I want to let you know about this morning is that Peter was somewhat of a magician. <laughs> and I will just tell you about one story 
why I, as a young soldier, looked at him after that as some sort of magician. And before I go into the episode, any resemblance of anybody that you think that I'm speaking about, past or present, deceased or alive, is purely coincidental. <laughs> there was a time that those of you who know him and the servicemen I refer to, especially here this morning, that Sergeant Prentice was in charge of the Russian stores. And somebody or bodies put down a loot, what do you used to call it back in the day, where is when you take stuff that don't belong to you, <laughs> of epic proportions in the Russian stores. And the morning after, I didn't work that night, so my name clear. <laughs> The morning after, Peter stood under the coconut tree by the entrance to the Russian stores like this and would stare at everybody who passed by as though he was trying to see into your soul <laughs> to say that was one of the persons. But the, the real magician came out when purportedly there was a conversation between Peter and the then commanding officer who called him and asked Sergeant Prentice, is anything missing from the Russian stores? Because the talk on the ground that morning was that what occurred the, the night before. And Peter Prentice said, no, sir. He said, everything is accounted for. I said, that's a magician. <laughs> bring greetings and condolences from the Bonnet community, especially Condo Drive. Peter and the family moved in last on that street, and we welcomed them, and it was a great bunch. I watch Marsha and Mark now, and wow, I'm getting old. I just want to say that tall, handsome man. <laughs> All right, Michael. I remember him. Sometimes I'm walking out to get a car and he'll slow down the car. To pick me up. But I ain't hurry to get in no car. You are not going to town? Yes, get in the car. <laughs> OK. And it happened more than once. That's the house Peter used to live in. We will be there one day. And I trust and I encourage us that even at our last moments, we can call on God and say, I need thee. If we look at the times we live in, hello, get there. Get there with your Jesus. That when you reach out your hand to call out to him, he will hold your hand and take you home. So I have a little song. I ask permission. And this is on behalf of Bonnie, Marsha, Mark, Raquel, and... Malaika. Oh, Peter causing that. Eh? Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak. And I am worn through the storm, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way drew it near, precious Lord, linger near. When my life 
is almost gone. Hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand, lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When thy shadows appear, and the night come at mere, and the night is past and gone. At the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my work is all done, and my race here is run, let me see by the light thou hast shown that the city so bright where the lamb is the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home, precious Lord. Take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, and I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me home. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me appreciate those tributes. Thank you so very much. And if any soul here present want to have a confession, they can see me after, <laughs> after the service. We have a private session. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So this time as we continue the program, we're going to hear from Harriet, who's going to be sharing the eulogy with us. Then we're going to stand together for that song in the suite by and by. Then Michael is going to, not Michael, Richard is going to come again and sing for us Amazing Grace. Good morning. I feel there are others who have confessions to me. <laughs> but for some reason, you don't want to step forward. I'm Harrietta, the last sister of Peter. I was also known as a spoiled child, but I'm not here today for me. Today, as we gather to honor and remember the life of Peter Sylvester Prentice, we reflect on the journey of a man who touched the hearts of many. He was born April 25th, 1948. Peter was the second of eight children to Nathaniel and Claudina Prentice. His early years was filled with laughter and challenges. 
particularly the friendly yet spirited competitions with his brother James. Their sibling rivalry was legendary with epic battles of strength and speed that could rival any action movie. Their bond was strong and even in moments of disagreement, their love remained unbreakable. There was a time when Peter and James decided to spa. For some reason, James had more speed and he connected with Peter. And when he, James thought it was over, as he turned to walk away, Peter let go a right. <laughs> James said, Harriet, if that did connect with me, I would have seen stars. <laughs> Another time, Peter did something to James and take off running. But James was always a sharp pelter. James reached for a stone and as Peter go in, James send that stone and the stone following Peter. <laughs> and James got scared because when the stone connected with Peter's head, he went down. And James thought, oh my God, what happened? Well, James take off running to see what would become of his brother. There was blood. So James bust Peter's head. But their love remained unbreakable. Peter's educational path led him to St. Agnes Anglican Primary School and later to Wong's High School, where he embraced learning with enthusiasm and dedication. His commitment to excellence was evident, not only in academics, but also in his personal relationships. Peter cherished the friendships he cultivated, especially with companions like Patrick Nash, the St. John's, Bradshaw's, and I'm seeing some of them here, O'Neill's, Mark Sweens. I also see them here. These bonds served as a foundation of support and camaraderie throughout Peter's life journey. Peter's mom died on the 19th of March, 1963. On September 5th, 1968, Peter embarked on a new chapter by enlisting in the Trinidad and Tobago Regiment. His army number was 3538. And I understand he served on, on the Edinburgh team The rigorous six-week training period tested his strength and resilience, rewarding him with not only skills, but also a sense of purpose and a duty. The six-week training earned him a generous stipend of $24. <laughs> and he got a wh whooping $1 raise after he graduated or passed out. <laughs> Who knew military life could come with such perks? <laughs> his service to his country was marked by bravery and dedication, qualities that defined his character in all aspects of his life. April 22nd, 1973, marked a day when Peter made the boldest move of all, tying the knot with Judith Brown. Together, they navigated the highs and lows of marriage, welcoming two, I have an adjective here, but I would not use it. But after hearing them, I'll use it. <laughs> Two mischievous children, Marsha and Mark, into their loving home. 
His unwavering love was the foundation on which their family thrived. Peter's knack for humor and love knew no bounds. As he navigated the waters of both parenthood and grandfatherhood with equal parts, laughter and love. Upon the end of his marriage, Peter found a new love. And that new love would span almost three decades. His relationship with Mary. Mary. <laughs> blossomed into a partnership filled with laughter, companionship, adventure, and unwavering support. Mary brought into Peter's life a well-blended family of not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, six stepchildren. He welcomed each one with open arms and embraced them as his own. And that was also reciprocated. They welcomed Peter with open arms and welcomed him as their father. Together, thank you, old soldier. Together, they created a tapestry of love and laughter that enriched all their lives in ways they never imagined. And even me, I never imagined. As we honor Peter Sylvester Prentice, the patriarch, the prankster, the beloved father, big brother, uncle, cousin, friend, let us celebrate his life with gratitude and joy. In the tapestry of time, Peter's story will endure as the testament to the power of resilience, love, and the enduring spirit of a man who touched lives of many. I heard about the Russian, but I want people to know Peter fed many. I met some of them who testified to your brother when we didn't have nothing to eat. That boy used to feed us, you know. And when I say nothing to eat, girl, nothing to eat, you know. And that boy used to make sure we have food on our table. Let us carry with us the memories of a man who lived with passion and purpose. His presence will be deeply missed, but his essence will remain etched in our hearts forever. Let us remember Peter, not with sorrow, but with gratitude for the light he brought into our lives and the legacy of love he leaves behind. Farewell, dear Peter. Rest in peace, knowing that your journey on earth was a reflection of honor, courage, sincerity, and love. Your memory will be cherished, and your spirit will shine brightly in the heavens above. Rest in peace, Peter. We love you. May we all stand as we sing in the sweet by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father is over the veil to prepare us a dwelling place yeah. in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet 
sit on that beautiful shore. We shall sing of that beautiful shore. And the Lord for the Father of the blessed. And our spirit shall sorrow no more. Not a sign, not a shadow of death. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Morning. You want to be secret? I will try to do the best I can at this time in terms of staying strong. But before going, I would like to tell my brother James because it's one of the shortcomings of human beings not to say to each other that we love them. Yeah. And um, why I can't just the fact that Peter is not there remains are there. I am saying today that I want to say something to the apprentices' family. <clears throat> this is why God gives us the freedom of choice. Many of us don't understand it, even today, that we have choices in life that sometimes we waste. And we believe we know the day, the time of the hour. That is not for us, but God is very smart that he allow you to determine what you will do when you become of age of accountability. I will be very dishonest. This morning, if I take a position of not being brutal a bit. I'm a mash of cones, but sometimes this is what life teaches all of us. 
Dr. Depend, his family, <clears throat> I want to say to you all this morning, because I could speak on behalf of the apprentices, I can't speak on behalf of some of the others that would have bring some of the apprentices to the fold. We have a responsibility. And you know what that is? That is to do what is right. And we could choose to do what is right, or we could take a position to continue to do what is wrong. To the senior apprentices, and to some of the junior ones, I plead with you all today, because some of you all may feel Peter is no longer here, and of course he's not here. But there are some things that did not go with Peter. Today is not the day to do some strange things. But um, in 1999, the gentleman that is not in there, would have said, go and get that for me. And we would have done that. I want to say to some of you all in here this morning, because I think most people just come and lie. I'm not afraid to say that. Some of us just come and lie. Not today. And I will not go the, the distance that some people feel I may go march on, Mark. I am um, I really looking for someone that I'm not seeing. I want to say thank you. Good battle in the front. Today I'm seeing some people that are so close to me for the first time since 1999. And I want to say to some of you, it angers me that we had a choice to make, and we make it wrong. That is why I'm speaking to some of the senior apprentices. Let us stop, because we're going to leave a legacy behind that's going to affect all of us. And it would be a bitter pill to swallow. And what I know Beyond 1999, and what I experienced in 1999, is a bitter pill and never swell it. And I want to tell some of you all in here this morning, I am not fooled by nice words. Because I could sit here and people could say things that is not so, and I could leave here. Because that is a choice you have. And you make a choice to say what you shouldn't say, or do what you shouldn't do. But I hope today, and I'm so happy that this may sound harsh. Because of the power of the Almighty God, He put things in place that to the PT in here ain't nothing we say. So all we get come in here, and all of us could. Believe that we got plan we would get it. We're not going to get it. I wanted to tell Judith, but um, hey Judith, 
But Judith is not here. I'm not sending no message for Judith. Mary, what has broken the sequence of spending time as a family was COVID. After, during COVID, all the family gathering ended. And Peter wouldn't miss one. But I remember a day he used a term, not coming. Not coming. Not coming. And if some of us in here believe, well, it was heartbroken. The guy that is not inside of there today was heartbroken. We may not have liked how some of whatever was handled and how it was done, but we too have a choice and we choose to behave erratic. So well, he have a choice and he behave as he feels he should behave. And I says, right, so behave. Mary, let me say something to you this morning. I want to say thanks. And on this occasion, I'm speaking for a guy by the name of Michael Prentice. I'm not speaking for the others because they didn't give me the authority, but I'm speaking for Michael Prentice. We will have a long relationship, you and your family. We're still learning your family, but we'll not be forgotten because 20-something years of somebody's life do this vanish in 10 years. I really wanted to say something to Judith this morning, but Judith is not here. Marsha and Mark hear me. What you all may feel and what you all may be expecting will not come. See the guy who, you see the guy who is not in there this morning, his remains is there. Many a times, sometimes we protect and we love people to the point where we don't want to hurt the feelings. And this is what happens at times. But in the days to come, all of us would understand what I would have said this morning. And that is a fact. I take these extra few minutes and I want to thank everyone for coming here today. But the fact of the matter is that we have a responsibility and we have, he has gone. But in his going, he leave all of us behind. And we has now have an opportunity to fix what we didn't fix when we were alive. That is a choice again, another opportunity that we have that we could now fix. That is the bottom line of this. We could now fix what we, we take for granted and believe we're here forever. We are not here forever. <clears throat> I want to tell Basil, <clears throat> I show most all, you know who is Basil? I want to tell Basil, hands off, go somewhere else. We have had enough. Go somewhere else. Don't come back here for a while. I can't tell Basil where to go. Basil could go where he wants. But don't come back. 
long dependencies for a while, go somewhere else. We, we, we get enough pain, we no more no more. Go somewhere else. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot more. Peter is my idol, you know. I idolize the guy who leave what he leave there. So I understand people's pain because I understand minds. And people who were connected to him are very well understand all the pain too. And you all has a right to feel pain. But we must also understand he also has a right to feel pain. And we mustn't take away one right because we ignore us. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say thank you this morning. And I hope the days to come because I'm not going to leave 1999 alone. If I believe, I'm going to leave 1999 alone only making a mistake. I'm not going to leave it. Because we have a, we have an opportunity to treat with how we get here. And I don't want nobody to already believe that we get here by accident. We get here by no accident. All of us contribute to 1999. I rest my case. Have a great day. Richard, will you come and play that, sing that song for us, Amazing Grace? <laughs> Richard was a bit distracted there.
Thank you, Richard. Now we're going to allow Ashton to come and say a few words before we get into the message for the hour. Ashton? Okay, well, there is. Pleasant. Good morning to everyone. Ashton, by the way. Good, everyone. Kevin. First. Firstly, I'd like to say, um, the man bring me 21 this morning, boy. That 21. <laughs> he, he, he will understand what I, what I, and some of you will understand what I am saying. Oh, and the score is 40 without loss, CSK batting. The last time I saw Peter was on Thursday. I just came from Tetron Barracks in my uniform and I went to look for him. And when I came through the gate, he gave me this look from head to toe with a big smile on his face. And I knew what that meant. And it's only that he could not say, well done, at that time. But I got a subtle bounce and a thumbs up. And it takes a lot of courage to come today because I will basically say for the last couple of days, we share a bond that is unexplainable. And I wish he was still here to get all those funny jokes when, when he was back in the army days. Something I wish we could have shared. And I know he's in a better place now, and his memories will continue to live on. Thanks. Adding to what um, Kevin has said, um, Peter was a man of many stories, enjoyable stories, stories that textbook. When, when, when Peter tell a story, the details, the gestures, everything. He, he made it like if you, you was part of it. And you can't take that away from him, his stories. Um, what, what can I say? Good guy, good. All Foes partner. We played a lot of All Foes over the years. Watched a lot of cricket. Genuine. Good. He's a, in, in cricket term, he was a genuine all-rounder, if you know what that, that term is. Um, he was a good guy, good. And that's about it. That's about it. That sums it up. He was just a good guy. He, he was... Hmm. I don't even have the words. I didn't prepare anything, but... He will be missed. He will be missed. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. And all the family members, I uh, hope we could meet and greet after and share some stories. Uh, we might, might know some of the stories you know. We might tell some of the stories he told us to you, you know? So thank you again. Good day, everyone. Notwithstanding those numbers you see on the program, 
We take no responsibility of people losing their money. <laughs> if we decide to play those numbers. I so we want to just look into God's word for a few minutes as we begin to wrap up this time of celebration, remembrance, cheers. We thank you all for coming and staying with us for this time. If you have the Bibles, we may have it on the electronic version. I'm reading from the book of Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 25 to 32. Luke chapter 2, 25 to 32. And let me just add my condolences and greetings on behalf of the Chandler family. Um, we had a close bond with the princesses growing up in St. James. And our parents attended the same church. And after the Christian Indian Church, where I pastor now, was started, Brother Prentice, as Peter's father, was much an integral part of that body. Man that I loved and respected. And of course, we were close to all the siblings growing up. And my siblings, there was eight of us also. So there's something that we all had in common and shared with the Prentice family. I think there was almost every one of us had, you know, a Prentice and a Chandler in terms of the same age range. So we thank God for those memories and, as I said, the legacy. So the book of Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let or allow your servant to depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. So, Father, as we bow in your presence, thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for the life of Peter Prentice. And even now, as we look to your word, I pray for your anointing to speak for these truths. We thank you, God, for those receiving them, that signs will follow and confirm these words. We thank you for doing so. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> now, this passage of Scripture... We usually hear it around the time of Christmas when we look at the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, it comes from the context of Jesus being brought to the temple when he was just eight days old, the temple in Jerusalem, to be dedicated or to be presented to the Lord. However, for the purpose of sharing this message, we will focus on the old man, Simeon. Unconfirmed tradition says that he was 113 years at this time. Now, whether or not that is true is irrelevant. But we're going to look at three things concerning Simeon in this passage. Simeon got a revelation. Also, we're going to examine Simeon's readiness. And finally, we're going to look at Simeon's reason for his readiness. So, Simeon's revelation is found in verse 20. 26, actually. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. This revelation, this knowledge, did not come to him by the print media. It didn't come to him through social media, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. This revelation came directly from God, the Holy Spirit. It said, don't die, he was told, before you have seen the Messiah, Jesus Christ the Lord. Now, at first glance, it appears there had been a promise if the word would was used. 
But upon closer examination, we can see that it was a warning evidence by the use of the word should, that he should not die, he should not see death before seeing the Christ. That warning applies to each of us today, whether we are religious like Simeon, who was described as being just and devout, or terrorists like Saul, who later become Paul of Tarsus. You should not die before you or I have seen and encountered Jesus Christ, the Messiah. We heard about movies earlier. I want to reflect on a popular 2007 movie, The Bucket List, starring Jack Nicholson, Morgan Freeman. Two terminally ill men went on a road trip with a wish list of things to do before they kicked the bucket. They went skydiving. They drove a Selby Mustang. They flew over the North Pole, ate dinner at the Chef Dior in the south of France. They visited the Taj Mahal in India. They rode motorcycles on the Great Wall of China. They did a land safari in Tanzania and visited Mount Everest in Nepal. One of the reasons that this movie became so popular is because it seemed that most of us have a secret bucket list. There are things we want to do and places we want to go before we die. Yes, some people getting that opportunity, perhaps knowing that the end is near, may indulge in their wildest fantasies and pursue all the pleasures they could afford from the, with the philosophy when the dead are done. Some may seek to reconcile with their family and former friends and find comfort receiving and giving forgiveness, thus easing their conscience of years of guilt and remorse. Yet, others may get very religious and return to the faith traditions of their childhood in the hope of getting favor in the afterlife. But some, studiously, refuse to even think of these negative thoughts about death and dying, while living in a bubble of delusion that somehow it will not happen to me. Hmm. The lead characters of the movie I just referenced wanted to see and to experience some strange and excited things before dying. But according to Simeon's revela revelation, your number one priority you're bound to must to do, whether you have a bucket list or not, in preparing for death, is to have a Jesus encounter. Simeon's revelation is now given to every man, every woman, every child, that they should not taste death until, through the eyes of faith, they see the Christ of God. He is offered freely. He has come. He waits to manifest himself to you and to the whole world. He is not willing that any should die and be lost. It would be a great privilege in your dying hours to have seen Christ by faith as it was to Simeon. It will be the only thing that can support us then and the only thing that will enable us to depart in peace. I do not know what transpired be between Peter Printis and the Lord in those moments before he died. I do know, however, as was testified earlier, that he was brought up in a Christian home with God-fearing parents. Therefore, it is not far-fetched to believe that he, as he departed this life on that Saturday morning, I believe, on the 16th of March, he called upon the Lord as so powerfully expressed in the words of the old hymn, Sweet our prayer, sweet our prayer, may I thy consolation share, till from Mount Pisgah, lofty heights, I view my home and take my flight, this robe of flesh, I'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air, farewell, farewell, sweet our prayer. Secondly, Simeon's readiness, verse 29, captures that. Lord, now let us, or now allow your servant to depart in peace according to your word. Or to paraphrase, Lord, 
I'm ready anytime you are. I'm sure Simeon might have loved ones who he was close to and enjoyed being, being with them. But he understood and accepted the stage of the journey he was at. It was the wise King Solomon in his inspired writings in the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes who told us that life consists of cycles and seasons. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die. Like Peter, sooner or later, our time to die will come. It's an appointment that could be delayed, but can never be denied. The writer to the Hebrews admonish us on the subject. Chapter 9, verse 27, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Therefore, since we all have this unavoidable appointment with death, it should be wise for us to prepare for the inevitable whenever it should happen. God's prophet Isaiah was sent on a mission to King Hezekiah, who was very sick at the time. It's recorded in 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. The message to Hezekiah was, get ready to die. Of course, we get ready for all kinds of things, all kinds of occasions. But this thing about death, we try to avoid even thinking about it. It is not that he or his loved one wasn't praying for God's healing intervention. Yes, I'm sure in Peter's case they were. But like King Hezekiah, Peter's sickness was unto death. In a famous passage of scripture, we hear so often on occasions like these, Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, confidently declared his own readiness. Chapter 4 of 2 Timothy, verses 6 and 7. For I'm not ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So, beloved, from our text we learned that Simeon, that old man, was ready. Having prolonged health challenges, Peter had time to get himself ready. We just read the testimony of Paul, the apostle, that he was ready. What about you, beloved family and friends here today? Are you ready? Finally, we look at Simeon's reason. The reason for declaring himself ready can be seen in verse 30. For because, for mine eyes, that's the reason you gave, mine eyes have seen thy salvation. For those who may have responded yes to the question I posed earlier, are you ready? I have a follow-up question. How do you know that you are ready? What? is the reason for your hope. Maybe some may say or imagine because they are religious or their spiritual standing or because of their acts of charity and general good behavior. The pastor said that Simeon was just and devout. We spoke of his character and his faithfulness to God. However, he didn't give those as a reason why he was ready. The reason that he was ready was because he had seen the Savior, who is Christ the Lord. We are challenged by the apostle of Christ, Simon Peter, that we should have a valid answer if asked, what is the reason for our confidence? First Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Simeon's reason was that he had seen, he had experienced the Savior, the Lord, 
Jesus Christ? Do you have a strong and confident response that you are indeed ready, having obeyed the direction given in the word of God? Those directions are recorded. In the book of Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 13, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today, if you're not ready, you too can get ready. And you can stay ready by following a similar path. You too can encounter Jesus the Christ, and you can call upon him as Lord. I want to challenge you right now as we bring this message to a close. After getting this revelation of what you must do before your turn comes to die, and of course I don't desire or wish that that happens anytime soon, but you know on the same day that Peter passed, we all got that tragic news that five men hanging out, what they normally do on a Saturday morning in half place in Observatory Street in Port of Spain. They left home that morning not thinking or imagining that before that day was half, they would be dead. Sad to reflect on it, to reflect on what's happening in our country. But that's the reality of our times. That's the reality of life. So I want to challenge you that you need to consider your state of readiness. To follow the path that Simon the fisherman took. The path that many here, I believe, have taken and called upon the Lord. Having the assurance, and this is the assurance, as written in the scripture, we just read it, Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Whosoever, no matter who you are, what you have done, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I want to invite you to stand with me now, everybody. And I'm going to invite you to pray a simple prayer with me. But I want you to make it your personal prayer. Of course, this is optional. The prayer that, as we reflect on what we heard a while ago, reflect on the time that, the fact that our time will come, to know that we are ready, and we cannot be ready until, or we shouldn't be ready until we have seen the Lord's Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He also said, I am the door. By me, if anyone enters in, he shall be saved. We're not talking about religion. We are talking about relationship with Jesus Christ who has come to give us that way to God. So as I say these words, feel free to repeat it audibly. Feel free to change words if they don't apply to you, right? Because this ought to be your prayer, talking to God. I'm just giving you a sense of direction. Say with me. Father today, I hear your voice through this message. So I'm calling upon you, Lord. I do not know how much time I have left upon the earth. So I turn my eyes upon your Son, my Savior, Jesus Christ. Please forgive me of all my sins. All my wrongdoings because of the sacrifice made for me on the cross of Calvary. I believe and I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and I fully receive 
and I embrace your salvation, which is only possible through him. This I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we give you thanks for this prayer. We thank you, God, for those who sincerely said these words. We thank you, God, for your grace to us, unmerited favor. And even though we don't deserve it, you're willing to forgive us. We thank you, God, for the life of Peter, what is meant to each person in this room, his association, his friendship, oh, God, as a colleague, as a batch. But we thank you, God, even if you come in remembrance of his life and to pay tribute to his passing, that even now reflect on our own, own life, Thank you, God, even for your grace extended to us. And in mercy, what we deserve, you, by your grace, you extended your love to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him shouldn't perish but have everlasting life. And so, Father, we give you thanks for what you continue to do for us. We pray for the family members, oh God. We pray, oh God, for those, oh God, who are close to him, his siblings, his children, Lord God, his companion, Lord God, and those, oh God, connected to him through her. We pray, oh God, continue to, oh God, bring comfort to them as the days go into weeks and the weeks go into months. And the months go into years, times of celebration, times of festivity, birthdays, and other times, oh God, that he will not be there. He will be missing. I pray going to comfort. We will also pray for a sense of reconciliation, even within the family. The hurts that are apparent. Oh, God, the disappointments, Lord God. Lord, we'll take this opportunity as Peter's passing to mend those fences, to forgive and to accept forgiveness, Lord God. To use this, oh God, as an opportunity for healing. And so we pray that healing will happen for this family. And as they go forward, oh God, as they face their tomorrows without Peter, but thank because you, Lord God, you are with us. And you promise to be with us always, even to the end of the world. And so we give you thanks, oh God, for what you have done and what you continue to do. What you will transform us, oh God, making us ready, ready for that time when you come, when you call. Bless us in the few moments remaining in this time together. And even, O oh God, we pray, O oh God, for that final farewell. We pray for your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We are about to do the commendation as we commit the body. You see, for the program that we'll have a time frame right before they have the actual commission done. And of course, you'll have an opportunity, those who didn't have opportunity to view the remains of our brother, Peter. Hallelujah. The song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, is a song of consolation that Christians have sung over the years. We sing it now to encourage, to bless the family, even before we do the commendation. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Here is salvation. Purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. 
Perfect submission. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture. Visions of rapture. Now burst on my side. Angels descending. Angels descending. Bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day Perfect submission, perfect submission, all is at rest, all is at rest, I in my Savior, I in my Savior. Are happy and, and watching and waiting, watching and waiting, looking above, looking up, filled with, filled with his good, lost in his love, lost in John, as we sing again, this is, this is my story, oh, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Was this? Take all to this world the soul of our departed brother Peter the Vest of Cambridge. We therefore commit his body to the ground, that's the earth, that's the dust, ashes to ashes, looking for the resurrection of the dead and life to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the mortal bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up the light of his cottage upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burden down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burden. Glory, 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 glory. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Since I, since I lay my burden, my burden down. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay my burden down. I feel better, I feel better, so much better since I lay my burden, my burden down. I feel better, so much better since I lay my burden down. Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye. 
I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Goodbye world, goodbye world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind. To go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Born, born, born again. Thank God. I'm Hallelujah. Born, born, born again. Thank God. I'm born. Thank you, Jesus. Born, born, born again. Thank God. I'm born again. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born. Born of the water, born of the water, spirit and the blood. Thank God I'm born. Yes, born of the water, spirit and the blood. Thank God I'm born. Hallelujah, born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born. Thank you, Jesus. Born, born, born again. Thank God. Born of the water, spirit of blood, come on. Born of the water, spirit and the blood, thank God. I'm born again. Born again, born of the water, spirit and the blood, thank God I'm born again. Born of the water, spirit and the blood, thank God I'm born again. Born of the water, spirit and the blood, thank God I'm born again. Praise the Lord. Again, on behalf of the family members, we want to thank all each and everyone for coming and remaining with us. You can have your seats. Uh, they're going to be opening the casket now, and we're playing some special music that was requested. Feel free to come up and to take a view. Feel free to greet the family, etc. Uh, we have a few minutes before they take the body for the cremation. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Don't care how a woman clever, I trust my dad and she. I could size up any woman in here or on the street, even though we have never met. I could tell you if she's sour, if she's salt, if she's sweet, if she's she easy or she's hard to get. But if her eyes start becoming kind of sleepy when you watch, she fix. My advice is to take it kind of light, maybe she's all for tricks. But if she smile with dimples on she cheek and then she laugh and she got open teeth, don't let she get away. She have a bag of sugar down there. Don't let she get away. She have a bag of sugar down there. To be with her there in heaven, to capture her is a must. Well, with me, it really doesn't matter. Even if she just flat like two fry egg, I will give she any money just as long as I could see she, she has to knock me up and delay. If she pretends to be serious and play, she's not observing you. Grab she hand if she try to pull away from you. That's a clue. Yes, if she smile with dimples on she cheek and then she laugh and she got open teeth, don't let she get away. She have a bag of sugar down there. Don't let she get away. She have a bag of sugar down there. Reaction during me conversation. If when he talk, 
she can't watch him, she does bow, she head or turn, she face. That is a sign, she is willing to go with him any time of place. So when he gone, I am advising you from then on, you must wear jockey shorts too, that's the only way you go protect the sugar down there. Don't let she get away, she have a bag of sugar down there. This is the story, ladies and gentlemen, about two lovely white women traveling all the way to Africa, 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 found...